This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. Stardom can be fleeting. It doesn't take much for a rising star to quickly become a falling star. For a short period of time, Victor Cruz shined hella bright. Dude came out of nowhere and had one of the most unbelievable seasons of all time. And he wasn't just a one hit wonder because he showed those same skills for several years after his meteoric rise. But one day I looked up and dude was just gone from the league. A new star was born in New York and Victor's time to shine was over. But what happened to him? And how did an undrafted player get so big in the first place? This is what happened to Victor Cruz, a wide receiver who came and went relatively quickly, but definitely left his mark. Without further ado, y'all already know what time it is, man. Cool yeah, boy. All right, man, before we jump into the video, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is a simple, reliable home security system designed to help protect you and the ones you love. It's incredibly modern as you can just order it online or over the phone and have the whole kit just delivered to your door. You basically follow a few steps, put up a few sensors, and boom, your crib is professionally monitored 24 seven, just like that. They got sensors to cover any entry points in your house, any doors, windows, and if anything goes wrong, the system itself will alert the authorities for you. It also comes with cool extras like a water sensor for flooding, heat sensors for fires, and a carbon monoxide sensor. And of course, you gotta have your HD cameras for peace of mind, and you can get it all for an average of about 50 cents a day. This sponsorship was right on time for me as travel is gonna be ramping back up here soon. And when I'm not home, it's nice having that extra layer of protection for my wife and young son. The whole thing was pretty simple to set up, and it took me about 20 minutes or so to do it. So you got your home base right here, basically the brain of the entire system your central hub. Then we throw up the keypad. It's got an adhesive that sticks right onto the wall. Easy peasy. Once you power it on, it automatically connects to your home base. It also came with HD cameras. So we got these watching a couple of key points in the house and you can monitor it live anytime from your phone. On top of the cameras, you get these sensors for key entry points. You can put them on doors or windows. And anytime these open, the system will let you know. It's also got a cool little reminder system built in so if you accidentally leave a window or a door open, the system will also alert you of this. It comes with motion sensors, glass break sensors, and basically enough equipment to lock down an entire room or area. And again, the system will contact the police for you if anything goes wrong, but you also get a nice little panic button that if you just want to skip all the extra stuff and go straight to it, you can press this. You get a couple of these fobs to easily arm and disarm the system, a free app that syncs with everything, and of course, a sign to throw out in the front yard in hopes that you'll never actually have to use any of this stuff. So if you're interested, visit simplysafe.com slash flimlo to learn more. Link is in the description. Shout out to Simply Safe once again for sponsoring the video, but other than that, let's jump in. Victor Cruz was born in Patterson, New Jersey, a crime invested area with limited opportunities, especially for a kid like Victor. So his father's black and his mom is Puerto Rican. And while his parents never married and weren't actually in a relationship for the majority of his childhood, they put any pettiness aside and successfully co-parented Victor. When he wasn't with one of them, he was with his grandmother who he credits with teaching him how to dance, a topic that will obviously be relevant later in the video. And while dancing was cool, the whole time his dad was nudging him towards sports, putting him in soccer early on. Those two worlds would eventually collide when Victor started playing football. With a background in dancing and soccer, as you can imagine, dude footwork was A1. As a high school senior, a 5'9", 165 pound Victor led Patterson Catholic to an undefeated record on the back of his 19 touchdowns. He wasn't the fastest and he damn sure wasn't the biggest, but some dudes just have it. Put him on a football field, he was magic. As a result, dude rarely ever got tackled, but the one time he did, he ended up in the clutches of Eric Arndt, who suplexed him. As fate would have it, this dude went on to become a pro wrestler known as Enzo Amor. Getting some early practice on my dog, Victor Cruz, right here, this is tough. Despite that small hiccup, it was obvious that Victor had the talent and the production to go to the next level. What he didn't have was the SAT scores. Dude couldn't qualify at any college. Thanks to that fact, after graduating, he ended up enrolling at Bridgeton Academy, where he did a postgraduate year to get his grades up. Of course, while he was doing that, he slid on out there to the football field, and he grabbed a quick 47 receptions for 883 yards and eight touchdowns. With the new boost to his GPA, 
Victor was able to secure a scholarship to UMass. Things was finally looking up for this man. He had made it to the next level. But just as the NFL dreams began to creep back into his head, they redshirted him that first year so he could put some size on. But by the time the next season had rolled around, my man was already ineligible. And just like that, he was right back in Patterson, New Jersey. He ended up trying to regain his eligibility at a local community college. Being back in that same environment he'd worked so damn hard to get out of, was a huge blow to his psyche, but it was nothing compared to what lied ahead. During the time Victor was back home, his father actually took his own life. It's a pain that I haven't had to deal with and is honestly a pretty difficult one to imagine. But basically the emotional earthquake shook Victor to his core and the aftershock damn near broke dude. Then he found a new source of strength. Victor was now the man of the family and he felt solely responsible for the well-being of his loved ones now that his dad was gone. So dude went from a misfit with no direction to a young lion on his way to be king. He quickly got his act together and refused to waste the opportunities that were in front of him. He got his grades straight and re-enrolled at UMass. He had first enrolled in 2005 but didn't actually get on the field in any meaningful way until 2008. But in those three years he had grown as a man, a student, and a football player. Now six feet, 200 pounds, dude hit the ground running. First season as a starter, he had 71 grabs for 1,064 yards and six touchdowns. As a senior, he followed it up with 59 grabs for 868 and five TDs. It only took him two seasons to finish fourth on UMass's all-time receptions list. He was fifth all-time in receiving yards and 12th all-time in receiving TDs. Had he gone to a big-time school, this would have been enough to get him drafted. But only being six feet tall and going to UMass, he was gonna have to blow some people away at Pro Day. He measured in at five feet, 11 and 5 8 inches. Off to a rough start already because them 3 eighths of an inch can actually make a huge difference with just the perception of receiver. Like a 5 11 receiver versus a 6 foot receiver, you know, it make a difference. Like, not like actually on the field, it's irrelevant. I just mean perception. Dude was 206 pounds and showed off some top end athleticism. He ran a 4.47 and recorded a 41 and a half inch vertical. Jumped a 10.5 broad jump and hit 16 reps on the bench. That's a pretty damn good day. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough for Victor to hear his name called in a 2010 draft. But shortly after, Victor was contacted by several teams and he ultimately decided to go with the New York Giants. This man was doing everything he could to stick on that roster, bro. In a preseason game versus the Jets, the man had six receptions for 145 yards and three touchdowns, giving the Giants a brief glimpse into the future. But the future would have to wait as Victor ended up pulling his hamstring before he could actually make any impact in the regular season. Despite missing the majority of the year with that injury, he still managed to stick around to the following season, which is a blessing in itself because a lot of times if you're undrafted and you get hurt, that's it. In his second year with the team, fortunately for Victor, he was able to stay healthy, but a few of his teammates weren't so lucky. He started the season off as the fourth man on the depth chart, but when Dominic Hickson went down with an injury, Victor stepped into that slot role and had zero intentions of ever giving it back. Ahead of Victor's first start in week three of 2011, one of the team's position coaches, Mike Sullivan, told him that if he scored a touchdown, he had to do something to represent his culture and ethnicity. Victor brushed it off at the time. It was his first start. He had way more stuff on his mind than what touchdown celebration he was gonna do. You know what I'm saying? He's trying to line up in the right spot, not drop the ball, not get benched, you know what I'm saying? But right before the game starts, Victor passes that same position coach. They kind of lock eyes and, and Victor pretty much knew at that point, like, all right, I'm gonna have to do something. The reason it was such a big deal and his coach kept bringing it up is because the game was held on September 25th, right smack in the middle of National Hispanic Heritage Month. Thinking of his own heritage, Victor got a little bit emotional. I mean, what were the odds that a kid who's half black and half Hispanic would be making his first start during this month? Late in the first quarter on third and second, Victor ran a route that should have moved the sticks. But when Eli Manning threw him the pass, dude got a hell of a lot more than just the first down. He caught the ball and broke out of a tackle, then danced on a couple Eagles defenders with two left feet. Then he turned on the burners and 74 yards later, he started dancing again. But this time, it was in the end zone. He broke out the salsa he learned from his grandma as a kid, and just like that, a star was born. What a lot of people don't realize is dude got very few opportunities in this game. With a grand total of only three catches, this man went for 110 yards and two touchdowns. Yeah, on three catches, bro. 
You talk about doing a lot with a little. Then dude would go on to have the ultimate dream season. Like it's to the point where it's almost unbelievable. It's literally hard to believe. The salsa dance and the story behind it, coupled with the bright lights in New York, blasted dude into superstardom. But that would not have been possible if he didn't go absolutely bonkers on the field. As you know, the salsa only comes out after a touchdown. So a three touchdown season, you know, it don't really do a whole lot for you. Victor caught 82 passes for over 1,500 yards and nine touchdowns. He tied an NFL record with a 99-yard TD versus the Jets and also caught two 74-yard touchdowns, a 72-yarder, a 68, and a 47. So an undrafted player who was seen as being lucky to just stick around on the roster at the beginning of the season was now a pro bowler and an all pro but not only was it a dream season individually the giants went nine and seven sneaking into the wild card he ended up having a quiet game when they beat the falcons that week but had five catches for 74 yards the following week when they beat green bay then in the nfc championship game he came up big with 10 catches for 142 yards and with that performance the nine and seven giants had scraped and clawed their way into the Super Bowl. Further cementing Victor's star status was the fact that in Super Bowl 46, the biggest game of his life versus the seemingly unbeatable 13-3 New England Patriots, Victor scored the first touchdown of the game and of course broke out his patented salsa celebration and went on to become a Super Bowl champion. His dream season was complete. Bro, can you imagine that? Like, you literally go from being undrafted to fourth on the depth chart to having this amazing breakout season, Pro Bowl, All Pro. Not only that, you go on to win the damn Super Bowl, bro, against what was seen as an all-time great team. Like, you literally can't script it out no better than that. The following year, Victor signed a $3 million free agent tender, but... One month later, he was rewarded with a five-year, $46 million contract for his contributions. He had two more years of similar production before a torn patella tendon in 2014 finally broke his stride. He basically ended up going through two years of rehab before finally returning to the field, where he picked up right where he left off, catching a game-winning touchdown and celebrating with a familiar dance. He played 15 games that year, but his production was weighed down. He'd gotten a bit older and the injury may have robbed him of some of his birth but he was still a good player and still had a lot left in the tank. Unfortunately for him, during his two years out, the Giants had brought in a completely new coaching staff. So Victor Cruz wasn't being involved in the offense as much, with Odell Beckham Jr. now skyrocketing to higher heights than Victor could have ever dreamed of. Once the Giants drafted Sterling Shepard, a younger, similar receiver to Victor, Vic pretty much knew the writing was on the wall. He started the year on pace to get his normal 1,000 yards, but about midway through the season, the new coaching staff held a kind of a weird meeting. They basically told the wide receiver core they were going to be mixing some guys in, and the idea, or at least the sales pitch, was that you know, they wanted to save a lot of their veteran guys for the playoffs. When you think about it, it kind of makes sense, especially in Victor's case, he was coming off a pretty bad injury and he was obviously getting a bit older. So, you know, I can see how you can sell that pretty easily. But as time went on, he realized he was being used less and less and less in the offense. Now, remember at the start of this section of the video, I was saying that he started out on pace for a thousand yards. Well, in his contract, if he had hit a thousand yards that season, the Giants would have owed him about a $10 million bonus. And while there is no proof that they stopped utilizing him in the offense to avoid paying that bonus, we all know NFL teams do this type of thing all the time and there's a very good chance this was the case with Victor Cruz, just got caught up in the business side of the league. That that season ended terribly as the Giants did make the playoffs but Victor Odell and a few more of their Giants teammates took that dreaded trip to Miami before a playoff game against Green Bay. You know the one on a boat Trey Songs is in the picture oddly no women in the picture I think they were just on the other side of the boat big boat came out of the weird time it's kind of a weird picture really bad look especially before a playoff game and then they proceeded to not show up and get beat by Green Bay in the playoffs they literally had one day off and when I tell you they got everything possible out of this day they hopped on a plane from New York to Miami hit the club through a boat party like they got all the potential out of this now I gotta bring it up 
Dennis Rodman's famous Vegas trip. If you're one of the seven people who haven't seen The Last Dash yet, in the middle of one of the Chicago Bulls' title runs, Phil Jackson and MJ gave Dennis Rodman the okay to take a weekend trip to Vegas just to unwind and do Dennis Rodman type stuff, you know? This man Rodman stayed gone for like a week, but when he got back, played his ass off, they went on to win the championship. You gotta understand, different people are wired differently. And while a person like myself may prefer solitude to think and kinda get my mind right, other people need to be in a social environment in order to stay balanced. And while I know everybody won't feel this way and that's cool, feel how you feel, I have zero issues with the trip. Not one single problem with the trip. My issue is, why you gotta post everything? Don't let people in the circle who gonna be posting everything you do on the internet, man. Had they kept a tight circle on this trip, maybe skip the club and just hit the boat, no cameras, this wouldn't even be a story. It'd be like some urban legend that nobody could confirm or deny. But instead, the media had all the proof they'll ever need. Victor said this picture would hunt him for the rest of his life. And he's right. <laughs> In February 2017, the Giants released Victor Cruz. And after a brief stint with the Bears, Victor announced his retirement in 2018. In only a couple of years, dude has stayed busy. He's worked as an analyst, started a clothing line, and stacked up a few acting credits. At 33 years old, dude seems to be enjoying retirement, taking care of his kids, and dude seems to have a healthy relationship with actress Karuchi Tran. Dude came a long way from Patterson, New Jersey, and he had a relatively short, but extremely impactful NFL career. All right, man, that's gonna do it for the video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget, Click the thumbs up button. Now, if you're looking for more Flim Low Raps content, I actually started a podcast with my partner and fellow YouTuber, KTO, it's called Sports Therapy. So if you want to check it out, click the link on the screen and subscribe to the Sports Therapy YouTube channel. Other than that, I'm going to holler at y'all next time, fellas. My name is Flim Low Raps. Peace.